Seaman, she Man Shiman is a virtual pet video game for the Sega Dreamcast. It is one of the few Dreamcast games to take advantage of the microphone attachment. The narration is voiced by Toshiyuku Hosokawa in the original Japanese language version and by Leonard Nimoy in the English language version. The face of the semen creature is actually that of the game's producer, Yute Saito. A limited edition game titled Christmas Semen was released in Japan on December 16, 1999, alongside a translucent, red Dreamcast. In 2001, Semen was re released in Japan for the PlayStation 2 as Semen, Kinden no Pet, Gaze Hakushi no Jiken Shima, Shi Man Tilda Jin Duan no Peto Tilda Gaze Boshi no Shi Yan Dao, the first edition of which came with a microphone. A PC version for Microsoft Windows was planned, with the Seaman being able to interact with the user's applications. No release date was specified, and it was later cancelled. A sequel called Seaman 2 was released in Japan for the PlayStation 2 in 2007. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Story and setting. As a new pet owner, the player is given the responsibility of caring for and learning about the enigmatic semen species, using a replica of the discoverer's laboratory. The player must figure everything out by themselves, such as appropriate care, with some guidance from the narrator Leonard Nimoy as himself. <laughs> <laughs> Backstory In the game's manual, it contains the backstory about the seaman. During the 1930s, Dr. Jean-Paul Gasset was a member of a special team of French biologists sent to Egypt by the French government. During that time, Dr. Gasset was determined to research a creature that was an omnipotent messenger of gods among the ruins of the Third Dynasty. In March 1932, in the city of Alexandria, Dr. Gasset met up a local resident, who, while fishing, caught a seaman. Dr. Gasset obtained a sample of some of the semen eggs, and went back to France with the egg samples in his possession. When Dr. Gasset returned to France, he attempted to raise the eggs, but in the process, the semen died. Shortly after this, he published a thesis of his work. Leading academics, however, dismissed him and his work as a PR stunt and without proper evidence to support these theories. As the result, the work was ignored, and no one believed him. His hypothesis suggested that the seaman was responsible for transferring knowledge that increased during the Third Dynasty across oceans and other lands. This theory became the basis for anthro-bio-archaeology, which is a highly valued field of study. Shortly after publishing his thesis, Dr. Gasset was fired from his post. After his dismissal, news of Gasset's whereabouts and activities were unknown, and details during those times were sketchy. Rumors began circulating that Dr. Gasset's trail traced to some remote islands in Southeast Asia. It is known, however, that he escaped the horrors of World War II and met up with his colleague, Kimo Masuda. It became clear that sometime during these years they were able to conduct further research on Seaman's evolution, quite possibly even up to the creature walking on all fours. Unfortunately, there was very little hard data or evidence that substantiated these findings. In March 1996, the French government established the Anthro-Bio-Archaeological Research Institute ABARI, headquartered in Paris. The institute is based on the work of Dr. Gasset, and most of the modern-day research of semen specimens has taken place there. In 1997, the ABARI announced there was a strong possibility that these semen species were closely related to the origins of ancient civilizations in Egypt. On October 6, 1998, one of Gasset's formaldehyde specimens is discovered at the University of Paris. On February 15, 1999, parts of Gasset's journal and note entries were found in the Masuda family storehouse in Matsuzaka City in Mie Prefecture, Japan. Professor Kendare Takahashi, who was directing the Japanese branch of the ABARI, successfully managed to breed semen eggs in captivity, in July the same year. Soon after, semen was presented in aquariums across Japan. In July 2000, an expedition team embarked for Egypt in a first major research of the semen in the wild. Gameplay The semen is a form of freshwater fish the color and shape of the fins suggest that it is a carp with a very lifelike human face. 
It possesses human mannerisms and behavior with which the player interacts. Seaman is considered a unique video game in that it presents limited action. The player's role is to feed and care for Seaman, while providing him with the company that he needs. In fact, the player is required to check on the Seaman every day of real time, or he could die. A portion of Seaman's knowledge is random trivia. When he asks what the player's birthday is and the player responds via the microphone input, Seaman will then share significant events which happened on that date. The seaman becomes fairly domesticated, but this does not prevent it from insulting the player or constructing less than friendly remarks. The player is provided with an unhatched seaman egg at the beginning of the game and through various terms of development and conditions develops and interacts with it. By using various buttons on the Dreamcast controller, the player controls all of the machinery and physical contact with the mysterious creature. The player is also provided with multiple seamen for breeding and interaction purposes. Over the course of the game, it is required of the player to evolve their semen to different stages in its life cycle, eventually transforming into a frog-like creature outlined on the disc's cover. Mushroomer in the semen's first days of life, it begins as a mushroomer, a form consisting of a well-developed optic organ and a flagellum, lacking a face or any verbal means of communication. In this form, it is essentially a parasite, which overruns a host nautilus via being eaten and consumes it from the inside out for nourishment. Mushroomers tend to stick to one side of the tank by the ends of their flagellum if left alone. In this stage, the player's interaction is somewhat minimal and plays similar to a tutorial, allowing the player to learn to control the heat in the fish tank, direct the mushroomers, and clean out any filthy water that has accumulated over time. Gilman After emerging from the deceased body of the Nautilus, the organism enters a stage called the Gilman, which features a humanoid face and small, fish-like body. During this stage, the semen becomes capable of speech, copying and reiterating comments through a microphone input. At this stage, the player will begin the communication process and continue facilitating the aquarium as the gilman grows larger, developing scales and a larger vocabulary. Although they begin small, the gilmen soon kill one another until only two remain. Their genders are indeterminate, however. When they get to a certain point, you can name one of them, and it will change its color and gender. Podfish in this stage, the semen is still fish-like in appearance and is similar to that of the gilman but more developed. After mating, the male podfish dies. The aquarium is also transformed into a terrarium, being drained of most of the water and introducing land and oxygen to breathe, the female then lays eggs on the shore. Shortly after the deposit of the eggs, the female also dies, leaving the player with the hatching of a new evolutionary stage. Tadman instead of the introduction of new mushroomers like the player began the game with, the player is provided with a new form called Tadman, that looks similar to matured tadpoles entering the frog stage. The Tadman's diet consists of feeding upon their fellow siblings until the number is reduced to two. When this happens, the siblings will produce an egg, which will hatch into a frogman. Frogman this is the semen's final stage of its maturity process. It has now become an amphibious creature, with its humanoid face and a frog's body. Now able to coexist between the habitats of water and dry land, the frogman is now capable of powerful leaps and the consumption of insectoid organisms. However, like the real world frog, the creature still requires the moisture of water to stay alive, and the player is now provided with a sprinkler system to achieve this. It is also at this stage where the player releases the semen into the wild. While anything concerning metamorphosis and reproduction are left to speculation while the frogmen are in the wild, it can be assumed the semen will eventually lay mushroomer eggs and start the cycle over. Reception In Japan, the Dreamcast version of Seaman sold 399,342 copies as of February 1, 2004, making it the third best-selling Dreamcast game in the region at the time. The PlayStation 2 version of the game sold 305,632 in Japan as of November 2, 2008. Famitsu rated the original Dreamcast version of the game 2940s and scored the PlayStation 2 remake a 3140s. Seaman received an Excellence Award for Interactive Art at the 1999 Japan Media Arts Festival and received the Original Game Character of the Year Award at GDC 2002. 
In 2008, Game Informer named the game one of the top ten weirdest of all time. The Angry Video Game Nerd, a game critic who generally reviews only bad games, reviewed the game in 2015 with a positive impression, 16 years after it was released in Japan, praising the game's creativity and voice function, but also criticized its tedious gameplay and controls. He dedicated the episode in memory of the late Leonard Nimoy, who died earlier that year. See also Hey You, Pikachu Lifeline NUDE. At Natural Ultimate Digital Experiment